Thank you, Roger, for that beautiful introduction. Um, I'm going to start with a poem about sample-based music. I'm always fascinated by the possibilities of taking one sound and making it into another through the use of devices like this one. This is called The Room, and it starts with an epigraph from one of my favorite sample-based musicians. When you sample, you're not just picking up that sound. You're picking up the room it was recorded in. For the purist, hung up on tracing a drum break to its source, acquired in the few moments grace before the store clerk, thin-voiced, announces closing time. It's not just the drummer's slack grip, how the hook line swings in the session singer's interpretation, or the engineer's too loud approximation of the MacGyver theme tune. It's that hiss, the room fetching itself from itself in hiccups and spools. Though there's a knack in telling a side from remix, from test press that never saw the light of day. Mere completists never learn a good song's secret. Air displaced in that room the breath of acetate. I want to try and channel Adam Lowe for this next poem because it's speaking to a, uh, it's speaking to the, the late 70s, early 80s, black gay club culture in New York and it's about a DJ called Larry Levan. Phantom Limp. I have known you by many names, but today you are Larry Levan, your hand on the platter in the smoky room of a garage regular's memory. You are keeping when doves cry in time as you swing your hips and sweat drips from your hair, the color of James Brown's scream. King of King Street, we are still moving to the same sound, though some of us don't know it's your grave we dance on. Cutting shapes, machismo lost to the beat, every road man is a sweet boy if the DJ plays heartbroken at just the right time for these jaded feet. Teach us to shapeshift, O oh Legba. You must know I'd know your customary shuffle, that phantom limp anywhere, that I see your hand in the abandon of a couple, sliding, middle of the floor, quick and slick as a skin fade by the hand of a Puerto Rican clipper man who wields a cutthroat like a paintbrush. Let us become them a moving ode to sweat, ordering beer in a corporeal language. From a barman who replies by sweeping his arms in an arc to fix a drinks our lips will yearn for, a taste we've been trying to recreate ever since. And I want to finish with a slightly longer poem, which is in various parts. Some of them have titles which I'll mention, otherwise I'll just leave a kind of a pause in between. Calling a spade a spade. I no longer write white writing. Yet white writing won't stop writing me. Thomas Sayers Ellis. The N-word. You sly devil, lounging in a pinter script or pitched from a transit van's rolled down window. My shadow on this unlit road, though you've been smuggled from polite conversation. So when a friend of a friend has you poised on his lips, you are not what he means. 
No call for bald fist, since he's only signifying on the sign, making wine from the bad blood of history. Think of how you came into my life that day, of leaves strewn as I had never seen them strewn, knocking me about the head with your dark hands. You came back as rubber lips, pepper grains, blick. You're so black, you're blick, and how the words stuck to our tongues, eclipsing, or so we thought, all fear that any moment anyone might notice and we'd be deemed the wrong side of a night sky. Lately, you are a pretty little lighty who can get dark, because even now dark means street, which means beast, which means leave now for Ben Fleet. These days, I can't watch a music video online without you trolling in the comments, dressed to kill, in your new age, binary, clothes. Our matchmaker, the only other, other kid in class, was my best friend after the urge passed to slap your negritude out of his mouth. Knowing what it was to have the spotlight, we stood in line for auditions in the hall. In lieu of a third, we were the two magi, honoring a blue-eyed plastic messiah, bearing our gifts of thrifty chinoiserie. The Holy Mother was a girl named Phyllis. I had my words down three weeks before the show. Come, Melchior, let's make the best of the light. Casting. My agent says I have to use my street voice. Though my talent is for rakes and fops, I'll drop the necessary octaves, stifle a laugh at the playwright's misplaced get me blood and safe. <laughs> if I get it, they'll ask how long it takes me to grow cornrows without the small screen's knowing wink. Three years rather, two years rep, and I'm sick of playing lean, dark men who may have guns. <laughs> I have a book of poems in my rucksack, blank pad, two pens, headphones that know Prokofiev as well as Prince Paul. Thank you.